Good evening, cult members, and welcome to the, to the Pop Culture Cult. This is Sean. I'm Janice. And uh, I'm, I'm all kinds of flustered. This <laughs> is episode four of Game of Thrones review. We're going to try to do it in 30 minutes. Um, we have tequila for those on the visual. Um, it's, it was it, an emotional episode. This one was harder than last week. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 gonna be I'm gonna tell you right now I'm gonna do my very best not to curse. <laughs> I'm not making any fucking promises. <laughs> Let's get in right into it with um uh the the opening seg the opening of the Game of Thrones has always right. been a big thing. Right. And this season it's they've been going from the wall and showing the tiles roll over and stuff like that right showing the the night king's <clears throat> progress night king's progress through um uh heart heart home and and then down to winterfell yep. and um and it's been getting darker and darker and darker and then this week it was nice and bright you could see everything yeah and the tiles didn't change right and they stopped at, win at, at winterfell. winterfell they didn't continue to flip over ice or whatever. right right um and then they went into winterfell itself and the great hall is wrecked <laughs> yeah it, and it even like tried to pick itself back yeah. up and then couldn't and couldn't just... and the crypts were kind of um discombobulated too yeah, yeah. and then they went on to king's landing like they normally do yep. and then they show the ring at the end with the comet and the dragons We'll get into that later. <laughs> um, but the, f the what we're gonna how we're gonna break this down is we're gonna talk about everything that happens at Winterfell and then yep. everything happens at w King's Landing. We finally get to King's Landing in this episode, uh, uh, which we knew was gonna happen after right. the win Battle of Winterfell. Right. And that's so, where they gotta go. So the episode starts off with uh, Danny t um, trying to say goodbye to Jorah, whispering in his ear, kissing right. him goodbye. You get Sansa crying over Theon. Right. Uh, and and she gives um, Theon her pen, her Stark pen. Right. Making him, like, an official member of the Stark family. Yeah. Yeah, which was awesome. Which was, was sweet. Which was super sweet. Yeah. Um, and then a, John with Lyanna. With Lyanna. Mormont, Mormont. And Sam with... Um, with Eddie. Edmund. Eddie. Yeah, and so everybody kind of had their moment with, uh, you know, people who were close to each other to to them, right? Who who fell, and then um, Sam, Danny, John, Grey Worm, Arya, and Thorman all got torches to light the dead and do a f full on Viking funeral, right? Which is about the only way you can really handle all the dead bodies that were there. <laughs> there's 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 a few. And just to make sure that none of them come back. Right. <laughs> Cuz that's a theory out there. Right. There, there is a and we also get in this whole time um they as the as the funeral pyres are burning, they show all those who are still alive on the outside of of Winterfell and John gives this really big speech about how um, we need to work together and we need to remind everybody for, um, for generations, how we all work together to right. stop the army of the undead. Right. And I didn't look it up, but I feel like that was kind of something that was said in a, in a book previously about kind of a speech that was made the last time yeah. the long night happened. It seems like I remember like old Nan saying something about you. Yeah I, I, yeah. I remember kind of that speech before. Um, you also see a noticeable separation between Danny, Grey Worm, Masande, Varys, and, and um, uh, Tyrion. Tyrion over here, and then all the Starks over here, and there's a, an actual, a big, a big gap. gap between the yeah. two, including in the lines, in the lines yeah. of the, yeah. of the, of the soldiers and my everything. people. And these are your people. Yeah. yeah. And I just thought that was really interesting yeah. that they kind of make a visual. It's very subtle, but it's a visual cue of kind of where the lines are being drawn right now. Yeah. Um, and then we get the feast, the hail, the victorious dead feast. Right. That you get um, in battle of Helm's deep. Now, a lot of people have been talking about how, Winterfell, the Battle of Winterfell felt like Battle of Helm's Deep, and so right. then the next the next morning you get the 
the the the feast to celebrate that everybody who li- lived right and and right. to um, not mourn but to celebrate the lives of those who fell right well and it starts off pretty mournful somber, somber. Yes. yeah and yes. and then goes from there <laughs> D- uh, gentry is the the hound and gentry are kind of going back and forth and gentry pretty much tells uh, hound pretty much tells gentry like go get laid go find aria yeah just go like g- <laughs> go do it you're still alive so yeah yeah. Act like it, and uh, and so he gets up and he starts to kind of work his way through the crowd, and he works his way towards head table, yeah. where Danny and John and Bron and Bran and Sansa, Sansa. are all sitting, <laughs> and he gets out, and Danny says Gentry, and kind of starts pointing out that he was the last Baratheon, and which not everybody in the room knew, <laughs> not everybody in the room knew, and um, she gives him, um. Storm's End and right. makes him Lord of Storm's End right. as the last Baratheon, makes him a Lord and right. um, gives him his proper title. Right. A proper title, let's put it that way. Right. And I think that it was kind of a convenient way for her to show everybody um, in the North where she has not been very warmly received that she can be a person of the people, you know, her entire time has been spent um, freeing slaves. And right. so they right. love her. They love her for it. And, yeah. But she comes to the North. Well, they don't need her to free them. They're already free. Right, right. And that's <laughs> and, a reoccurring question throughout the episode. Right. Is the North, like, questioning who this girl is. Right. Well, and it has been, actually, for right. a couple episodes. Yeah. But they needed her. Um, now they don't necessarily need her anymore and so she's trying to show um people john you know um torman those people that hey i can i can be Be a a queen of the people and 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 trying to get them to warm up to her but it doesn't seem to really work 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 and and as they go deeper and deeper and you know they, they celebrate gentry being you know the lord of uh, right of, and, of now storms everybody's and, 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 and everybody's now drinking and everybody's into their cups and and everybody's having their moment celebrating and as that goes on longer and longer and longer danny is by herself it's pointed out that danny's by herself more and more and right. more yeah. thorman even kind of does a um inadvertently kind of calls john king right and how he and you how, rode a dragon how, and how she's he, over here going i've been riding dragons, dragons for forever <laughs> right and so and and they kind of make a point of showing that it's it, you know she's kind of alienated from everybody who's in yeah. the north yeah and while all this is all going on too we've got uh sansa and the hound like addressing the hound and how yeah um like if the hound saying, if you'd come with me, you know, Littlefinger wouldn't have happened. Ramsey wouldn't have happened. And then, and then sh- her kind of turning it back on him and saying, if this doesn't happen, uh, I'm still just a little bird and I'm not, I'm not the person I'm not I the am person today. I am today. Yep. Um, we also get, um, Tyrion, um, uh, you get Thorman, like being full on drunken wild men, whatever. <laughs> uh, and, and just try like, just, like telling stories and doing all these different things yeah. and, and like trying to go John into drinking a and, whole horn full of mm, wine or right, whatever. Right. <laughs> um, we get a scene with um, Jamie sitting down with Brienne and he grabs her hand and says, you're drinking with me yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And pa- Podrick's sitting there yeah. and then Tyrion, uh, Tyrion shows up down. and they start playing Tyrion's game yep. where <laughs> his drinking game, his drinking game where you have, where he's the person says something to another person. Yeah. And if it's true, they have, the person has right. to drink. Right. And if it's not, then, then the person who asked the question has to, it's kind of his version of I've never. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've and never s- ever. So they're going through the whole process and it's, it, it it's becoming pretty obvious that, I hit the, Stop pushing buttons. I hit the button. Hi, we're back. <laughs> um, this is what you get for push, pushing buttons. Um, but it gets it becomes obvious that there's there's something between Jamie and Brienne. Yeah. And well, the, and yeah, there has been for a little bit, the, but it's now 
you know, it's like a whole celebration of life, right? You know, you're, right. you're like, we made it through, we're not dead, and we're drinking, we're drinking and so and your stuff. Inhibition, yeah. inhibitions kind of go down. And, yeah. and in this process, um, Tyrion asks, asks the question to Brienne, you're a virgin, and she doesn't drink, and she freaks out and leaves, and when she leaves, Tormund's standing there, and he's trying to pick up on her. Right. And she's like a half a head taller than he is, yeah. which is, and it's just funny because Tormund is full on like just into his cups gone. Yeah. And so he um, tries with Brienne. He's been trying for seasons with Brienne. Right. She shoots him down like officially. Yes. And she walks off and he like starts crying. Well, first he tries to kind of go after her. Right, And then right. Jamie jumps up and kind of stands in his way like, nope, no, uh, mine. Mine, yeah. And he turns off and goes off. And then Tormund almost tries to go again, but then Tyrion jumps up and he and gets like... Block, block, cock block, cock several block twice. Times. <laughs> um, By and a then, guy with one hand and a, and little, a, a, a little person. And a, and a gimp. Um, <laughs> and an imp. Um, so one of the northern girls are like uh, you can have me and he yeah gets better all of a sudden yeah um any port in a storm any port in a storm at this <laughs> point in time um, da -da 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 um so we get aria shooting archery in the hallway and gentry like almost gets hit by one of her arrows although right. he mi she misses on purpose um and he's like we should be celebrating. We won and it's because of you and stuff. And yeah. she's like, I'm not, you know, I am celebrating. I'm yeah. practicing. Yeah. And in this gentry is very drunk and now he's the Lord of storms End, and everything is going on. And he, I won't say drunkenly, but he asks Arya to marry him. Right. He gets down on his knee. He gets and down on his knee. Make me, uh, and, and you'll make a great lady. And we could go rain at winter uh, Storm's End together. Yep. And she doesn't say anything. She leans down, gives him a big, long, passionate kiss. He stands up. And she gives the same speech that she gave Ned yep. um, in season one, which was the whole, I'm not a lady. And that's not me. And that's not me. And so I can't be what you want. I can't be that for you. Right. Yeah. And, and as soon as he got down on his knee, I was like, oh, my, and he said, you would be a wonderful, you know, lady. And, and I'm like screaming at the TV. That's not her. She can't, she can't be that person. Right. <laughs> right. And so it's just, so you get this, you get this, um, elation of the two of them finally being together and then Arya just pointing out that that's just that was never going to be her yeah and and yeah. as much as in this house we wanted it really bad right it just it just well and she you know she didn't do it just because just to make him happy or whatever which kind of shows her maturity or her right um, right her dedication to who she is right? right she's not gonna she does obviously care about him she gives him this big long kiss it's if she was somebody else she would have totally said yes it has nothing to do with him it's all her it's, right it's, 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 it's like it's completely about her yeah and yeah. it's but she's also it's also about him because she's not being somebody that she's not just to make him happy because she does care about right, him, and right. she could have easily and, said, and she yes. even says, "You're going to be a good lord." Like, like yeah. makes a point of saying that. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, and I, that would have that is a, an expectation subversion. That's right. It's been a big part of the show the entire way. It'd been really easy for her to go. You know what? I really do care for you. And I'll make it work. Right. And, and then and just be being, miserable later. And, well, and yeah. just but being that, um, it's all about him. And it's not, it was, the decision was never about him. It was always about her and her decision to be her own person. Yeah. And that, I think that was really empowering. Yeah. For, especially for somebody like Arya, whose character is on next level at this point in time with everything <laughs> else. Um, we finally get the confrontation with John and Danny. Yeah. Um, to deal with the ramifications of Aegon Targaryen that right. is John. Right. And, Danny makes a point of saying, like, 
Jorah loved me, but I was never going to be able to love him the way I love you. Right. And they have this long embrace, like they're going to make it work. Yeah. And in their process, he stops and holds her back because he's like, he. it's almost like he remembers who she is to him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you're my aunt. You're my aunt. And they have this long discussion back and forth about Danny saying, I want to go back to the way it was. And John's Ned's son. And right. And as he will always do the right thing, no matter what the cost is to himself. Right. And family first. And, and, right. And, you right. know, and this is just a, a very different um, lifestyle than what Danny, you know, Danny was abused by her brother. Um, she didn't, she didn't really know her older brother. You know, she just knows stories about him, but she never, he was older and gone by the time, you know, when she was a small child. Right. And um, Viserys was, Viserys, Viserys, um, was just an asshole to her. And so she doesn't know this kind of family thing. And even though um, Catelyn used to call John you know Ned's bastard and right, she wasn't right. very nice to him the the kids the were kids all, all loved very him close very much. Yeah, yeah and yeah. so John has this family and and Ned's values right so they're just very different and, upbringings and people and in and, and Danny is like from from a place where cousins and aunts and uncles and all of them they all you know to keep the royalty together, right. we're all would all have children together and all that right. Kind of so stuff. for her, that's it's so this not is weird. Not, this is, so this isn't weird at all, which is an important part later when we have a conversation. Um, going to, anyways, um, <laughs> I don't want to get there until we're there. Okay, but the but the idea that that John is questioning this and he wants to tell Arya and Sansa, right, and she. You and know, she's, as soon as it's out, it's out. It, well, so. it's, yeah, there's right now. There's three people, four people in the entire Westeros and the world who know. Right. And if it gets out, it changes everything. Right. And and Danny's like, "Don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it!" And John's like, "Or yeah, John's like, I just I, I feel like I have to because they're my family and I can trust them." Right. Because right. he wants to have he wants to have Danny and be and love her, and have his Stark family and have them love him. Right. He wants everything. Right. And is naive to think that that actually is going to work. <laughs> so there's all kinds of fallout that happens with that later on. We get a battle plan scene. So we talk about how much of the... Hang on. Okay. We actually get the hookup with Jamie and Brienne. We do get the hookup with Jamie and Brienne. Yeah. yeah. So they actually... Um, it was awkward and cute and um but yeah so we actually finally get the they do hook up they actually and then we go to the battle scene. and then we go to the, the battle planning scene and uh they point out that we lost half the dothraki half yeah. the unsullied ha yeah. half the north uh the wildlings uh, are going home um the what thorman decides to take the wildlings home yep. and stuff and danny's like we're going now we're, we're going now. We're going to hit King's Landing because the longer right. we, the more time we spend in the north, um, the stronger that they're going to be able to get. And that's been like kind of going over everybody's head as much as they've been worried about this battle of the undead. It's this, they're the other evil out there, the other right. army. Has had this whole time. To this. Get. However, uh, you know, and this is jumping ahead a little bit, but um, I don't know that waiting a little bit more would have i think the the damage is already done the horse is already out right but just waiting a little bit longer to like sansa said let the armies heal would have been okay because i think that they already right right were there obviously when they show and up and they make a point of saying like um we have new houses coming to our you know new bannermen coming to our call mm -hmm. um but we still need time for the the army that we do have to get better mm -hmm. yep and, and, the, and the dragons right and um, and the dragons in um uh Rhaegon and Dro drogon no drogon was the other one uh Viserys. Viserion, Viserys. Viserion. um and so there's an obvious um line being drawn 
by Sansa. Right. She hates Danny. Like, and makes a point of like, like fighting against her in every meeting, like group meeting they have. And there's always like dirty, dirty looks and stuff like this. And this is one of those points where what actually Sansa is saying makes complete sense. Right. We need to have time for our, the army to get healed. Right. And Danny's like, no, we need to go burn everything down. Now. And I think that this actually kind of proves the whole um, North versus the outsider. Sansa is truly North. And and John has always thought of himself as the bastard. Right. So he's kind of trying to play both sides. And Sansa's like, no, the people in the North don't trust her. I don't trust her. We don't trust her. And John's like... You know, no, I'm I'm from the north. I love my family, but we can trust. So he's like, right. he's, he's like to, the, he, the one in the middle. He's trying to he's trying to ride the rail of yeah. both sides. Yeah, and um, Ned did that too, and we all know what happened to Ned. Right. So <laughs> uh, foreshadowing? I don't think so. <laughs> um, after that meeting, Arya grabs John and says, "We need to talk." Yeah. So Arya, John, Sansa, and Brian I mean, Bran go to the Weirwood Tree. Yep. To have a family. Confab. Yep. And uh, Arya and Sansa are arguing to John about having this unflinching affection and following of Danny. Right. And keep questioning him about what, why he keeps bending the knee and making a point of just following her blindly. Right. And he pretty much you know tells i am in love with her i think she's going to be a good queen i think it's going to be awesome as that conversation goes along though john starts to question his thought process and says there's something i need to tell you and he turns to bran and bran's like it's your decision like yeah. it's up to you like i thought bran was just gonna say it yeah because he's had zero filter and and but he decides like bran makes a point of saying this is your decision to make to tell yeah Arya and Sansa. i think this was probably a turning point I, I don't think although you know we've been led to believe that bran sees everything he knows what's happened in the past yep. and currently in the future but i still think that um and this is kind of one of those theories out there that even um even though destiny is you know people believe in in um in destiny and preordain right, right what's right, going to happen is going to happen right. there are still those points in time where um a decision can change the future yep and i think that bring actually wasn't sure um, what way John was going to go. Right. This was a turning this point. This was totally a turning point. Yeah. And I, th I, we can have a whole different video and we might do it if we weren't moving um, about what this particular decision could mean for prophecies and future events right. and what happens right. when everybody gets at King's Landing and all, like, all right. that kind of stuff. Um, but John makes Arya and Sansa swear that they won't tell anybody. Right. Before he tells them. And then they both swear blindly that they, like Arya, like I, I instantly does yeah. it. But I think about yeah. it. And Sansa's like, well, I don't know if I can do that. Burr, burr, burr. Um, and so she finally says yes. And then tells, John tells Bran to tell him. And then they cut it. Right. So now the army is, so they find out as Arya right. and Sansa find and out. And Danny is taking um, the ships to um dragonstan and then john is and the unsullied and what's the rest of the dothraki right the they're road. gonna go down king's road and march basically into king's landing right while while they come up from and, the and so that, that way they can encircle king's landing right. and pretty much starve them out is pretty much what the, the right general plan because is. cersei has brought all the people into the red keep to right. keep them safe keep them safe actually they're just cannon fodder yeah pretty um much. as everybody's starting to say their goodbyes sam and gilly come out uh they tell john gilly's preggers um <laughs> again. What, again um john and sam have a moment of you're my best friend you're my best friend kind of thing 
Uh, Thorman says, I'm taking the wildlings. We're going back to um, the north, north, the north, north, north of the wall where they can roam and not be, you know. Yeah. And I think Thorman said that they were going to um, they were going to go to the black. Um, to Castle Black Castle, yeah. until the winter was basically over and then they can, because obviously the weather is even worse up north. Right, right. Um, up north, north. So they were going to hang out in Castle Black, which is a little, you know, interesting, kind of come full circle because Castle, the whole point of Castle Black was to protect the wall, to keep yeah. the wildlings out and now the wildlings are all going to go occupy <laughs> Castle Black. Castle Black. And so it would make a lot of sense. Um, we get um, you know final goodbye and and Thorman says and you know kind of like till the next time which could be anytime soon here um, and John tells Thorman to take Ghost with him. Yep. And Ghost is all kinds of beat up yeah, he's and got a he's ear missing, missing an ear and stuff <laughs> and and tell he's telling Thorman like you know he belongs up there with you guys yeah, in, yeah. In, as a dire wolf. And he goes, John goes to leave and he looks at Ghost and Ghost kind of stands up and kind of like, you know, and John just like, kind of like, you know, kind of go with him (laughs) and just leaves and and Ghost is just standing there. I'm like, what kind of horse shit is that? Like, I can't believe you just did that. But they, they all leave and they, and they, and, and so everybody is now leaving Winterfell. And in this process, Tyrion and Sansa have a conversation and Tyrion is doing his best to try to get Sansa to buy into Danny. Yeah. And 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 she just there's just nothing it's nothing that she can that he can say that she's going to believe in Danny. Right. And there's a lot of questioning back and forth of why there's going on. Well, and Tyrion can tell that there's something wrong. Something wrong cuz yeah. Sansa is teary-eyed during this whole most of this conversation. And he Finally, she he finally goes to leave, and Sansa's like, um, "What if there was someone else?" Right, and tells Tyrion. Right, which will lead us into the next conversation. It's because um, everything that's everything that's happened at Winterfell that I can remember, at least off the top of my head and from my notes. And we still have uh, we still have to go to Dragonstone. We still have to go to King's Landing, which we'll probably have to do after the break. Right. So we are going to take a short break after these messages from the pop culture cult and we'll come back and do the second half there's a big episode guys i'm just letting you know (laughs) after this break hello cult members like what you've heard on this podcast then please subscribe and follow us here you can also find us on facebook at the pop culture cult we're on instagram at pop culture cult one and we're on twitter at pop underscore cult one we're also on youtube at pop culture cult and on the Stardust app under Pop Culture Cult. Please help us by liking, following, and subscribing to everything we have. This helps us build a bigger and better cult of pop culture. And we're back <laughs> on the Pop Culture Cult. Uh, so now we are leaving. Put my tequila down because it's a kind of episode. Uh, we are leaving Winterfell and we get um, the... Uh, the ship's going to Dragonstone. Dragonstand. Dragonstone. Yeah. Dragonstone. Dragonstand is our friend's household. Um, Dragonstone. <laughs> Dragonstone. And we have Grey Worm and Masande on the ship. Yep. And they hold hands. Mm. It was so nice. Um, and while this is all going on, Tyrion and Viser- Tyrion tells Viserys. Right. They're oh. down in the in the belly of the ship, whatever, and right. you know, sitting around talking and um Viserys is kind of starting to question and you know starting to question Danny and uh, why he, she, the decisions she's yeah. making and why she's making them and, yeah. yeah and Tyrion's like no 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 I'm I am team Danny and Viserys is like Maybe I'm they team can sh- whoever. Whoever's best for the people, <laughs> which <laughs> has been his MO Whoever's the entire win. way. Yeah. Um, and and the, there's a suggestion of them sharing, which is one of the things that they've talked about in the past, that, that there's been um, former uh, Targaryen, t- Targaryens who have shared the throne as equal yeah. power. Yeah, Tyrion's as very like, let's get John and Danny to get married and they can both do it together. And Viserys is like, you know that's not going to work for Danny, right? Right, and so there's there's a there's a there's a 
obvious like break in there's because there's been a pretty tightness between Terry and Ver, uh, Varys mm -hmm. for a while about mm -hmm. being Team Danny and and now there's the first little kind of you know cracks in the foundation mm -hmm. there between the two of them so we get um Danny on Viserion and um and uh Rhaegon I was, I was going to say Dragon. I knew that wasn't right. Rhaegal. Ray, Rhaegal um, are flying and going to um, Dragonstone and um, uh, Arrow, one of those giant ballista arrows, mm -hmm. comes flying up and hits Rhaegal. Right. And then another, and then one through his head. Right. And killing him. Right. Out of the blue. And they pan the camera around, and it's Euron with his fleet with... Every ship has one of those giant ballista uh, dragon killer. Right. They called them right. scorpions and stuff like right. that. And they all, I noticed the, um, what do they call those? The arms or whatever. The, yeah. Um, the bow, the bow itself. Have, of, of the bow have um, octopus, the suction cup things on them oh, so they yeah. all look like octopus arms yeah, yeah. sorry but there's like 20 ships there and they all yeah. have one yeah. and then danny can start and they just kind of just and danny makes the decision instead of going in and sacrificing well the last dragon she like, like she looks like she's gonna go in and she makes the decision to pull out no she goes in and they shoot and they all miss her yeah, she and makes. Then yeah, she, and then she like you can s physically see her face like, I can do something. It's gonna cost me my last dragon, and she makes. You could tell she makes a visual, a choice to leave, and yeah. as soon as she leaves, they all turn those scorpions on the fleet right. with the unsully right. and destroy the fleet. Right, and there's there's just carnage everywhere, and there's this really cool long take scene. Of Tyrion trying to get away, away essentially <laughs> on one of the ships, and it's just getting destroyed as yeah, they go along. Everywhere he goes, just another ballista bolt goes firing through, and so then he ends up jumping into the water because obviously the ships is, are being torn apart. Yeah, and yeah, and um, uh, Grey Worm yells at Masende to get in one of the skiffs so yeah. that you know like a, a lifeboat or whatever and so she can get to shore and there's a group that shows up on actually they they Tyrion falls and jumps into the wa water and then the mass from the ship that he was on falls into the water <laughs> what looks like it could be on him and the screen goes black for yeah. a good three or four seconds we're, and we're like, like no you can't you can't end the episode there <laughs> And then they, th then it comes back from black, and they're all on the uh, washing up on the beach, on and the you beach. can see the fleet in the background is just destroyed, yeah. completely gone. Yeah. And so the the only boats that they had are all gone. Well, but I'm not sure if it's all of them because then later somebody says several of our ships were taken out. So yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I don't know. Sure, if it was it the was whole, all, whole fleet, whole but fleet. okay. Um, they. Uh, Grey Worm is running around the beach yelling for Masande. Right. And and then they pan to King's Landing and you can see the people you know, coming into the Red Keep and Cersei is being told by Euron that... Uh, they were successful. They were successful. They have destroyed the fleet. They've killed one of the dragons. Um, and in that exchange, Cersei is very happy. And she talks about how we're going to kill this usurper. Right. And um, I'm going to reign from King's Landing, and you're going to reign from um, from the, the water. Iron, iron, yeah. From I'm going to reign from the land, you're going to reign from the water, and then our child is going to reign all of the Seven Kingdoms. Right. So now it's gone from Jamie's child to, to his child. To Euron's child. I still don't think it's actually, I don't think she's actually pregnant. I think it's just a play. Yeah. But, um, but he is super excited that he's, you know, right. he's going to be a daddy and that Yay. his child is going to be. And he said he was going to put a, put, put a, a prince bait, in her. Put a prince in her. Um, in that exchange too, they talk about the news propaganda that they're doing that the, 
the usurpers are coming here to kill all the people mm-hmm. in the town and that Cersei's the only one who can save them and right. all the, all this different right. things. Um, Varys. Uh, and we see that Missandei is. Oh, Mis- yes. So um, they, um, Cersei makes a point of saying, "Break! oh, she must be the breaker of chains and Missandei is actually in chains. Right. Um, in Cersei's room, essentially. And, uh, Again, it, like, just pulling at the heartstrings at, as we sit right there. It's right. like, what are you doing? Right. Um, Varys openly questions Danny. We get a we get a uh, another confab with the army. Uh, at Dragonstone over the over the map. Map. Yeah. And and yeah, he he makes a point of not looking her in the eye and saying, "I always." swore to you that I would look you in the eye and tell you the truth if I disagreed with um, what you were doing. And and then he looks up and looks her straight in the eye and says, I disagree. Yeah, because Danny wants to go to King's Landing and burn the whole thing down. Yeah, and, and, and he's damn, like... And damn everybody who's there, right. do everything to kill Cersei. Right, including kill all the innocent people that she has brought into the Red Keep. And he's pointing out... You're the breaker of chains. You're the freer of slaves. And now you're just going to go in and kill all these innocent people that Cersei is using as as pawns and protection. Right. And and that's not what you were supposed to be about. But she's know. emotional because she's lost one of her children. Yes. And, and she's been focused the last couple. I mean, I think I pointed this out last week or the week before that she has become very as soon as she got to Westeros she started getting very focused right, on, on the throne yeah and damn everything else yes yes and people have had to kind of rein her back and Tyrion has been the one who's been trying to rein her in the most yeah. and Varys has been kind of standing there and like not not really questioning Danny, but but making a point of like being there and kind of like supporting Tyrion in the whole process, and now right. now it was this scene. It was the opposite. The opposite. Varys was directly going against Danny and saying, "This is wrong. This is wrong." And Tyrion comes in and kind of backs Varys up by saying, "John and and the rest of the Land Army won't be here for a couple more days. Right. Let's go offer terms to Cersei. Right. Give her a chance to surrender before the rest of the army gets here." And maybe we can avoid the bloodshed altogether. Right. Or at least sp- spread the propaganda that you tried and Cersei right. denied you so that people aren't like, oh, my God, you just came in and killed everybody. I tried. I tried to spread, you know, offer the olive branch and, and Cersei didn't take it. Although if they're all dead, it doesn't matter. They're not going to know. It doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> um, but Danny actually agrees to that term that, yeah. that idea because yeah. uh, I think she un- at least at that point in time I don't think she feels like she can actually take King's Landing with just one dragon and and whatever forces she does have left over that were f- uh, made it off the ships that yeah. got destroyed so yeah. it makes a lot of sense from her point of view of of you know waiting we get a scene with Varys and Tyrion talking about treason mm-hmm. and Varys now has m- drawn a line in the sand. He knows that John is Aegon Targaryen, mm-hmm. and and he knows that John is even killed, and he knows that he'll make the right decisions for the people, which is what all Varys is all ever worried about is the people. Right. And Tyrion is still ba- is still on Team Danny, trying to back that horse that she will, in the long run, will make the right decision. Yeah. Even though everything recently is them having to talk her out of being crazy and just burning everything down. Right. But if you think about it, this is um, very much Tyrion and Viserys' MO from the beginning, right? Varys was all about, you know, his little birds and playing the system. And, um, you know, he didn't really have an opportunity to facilitate a whole lot of change on a high level, but he could... You know, spread right. some good right. on on a lower level for the you know the little people. And Tyrion has always been he gets a horse and he backs that horse until 
he has to kill his father, right? Right. <laughs> Until right. his dad is going to kill him or he kills right, his father, right. right? He's always super dedicated, super, you know, I'm I'm always going to back this horse until the very end. And now this is just the same thing. Right. This is Viserys being much more um, practical and down to earth and thinking about the little people. He was a little person. He came from the streets and all right, that. And worked his way and, up. And, and yeah. Tyrion's like, nope, this I'm back in this horse and this is the horse and yeah. I'm not going to listen to anything and, else. And, and Varys even makes a point. You're drinking more and more. Mm -hmm. Like kind of like maybe even questioning like is your drinking getting to a point where you're you know what the right thing is here but you're clouded by the judgment. Yeah. And by I mean everything. they're right and, back to where they were in like season three. Right, right. Uh, we go back to Winterfell, which we all thought Winterfell was done for this episode. No, we go back, <laughs> and Jamie's walking through the keep, and Brienne and Sansa are talking, and there's obviously something that's happened, and they walk off, and Jamie kind of tracks them down, and he finds out that what has happened with Rhaegal mm -hmm. and losing the fleet and everything that's happened, and Jamie spends one more night with Brienne and has kind of a moment of thinking, contemplation to himself. And decides to leave and go back to King's Landing. And Brienne comes out and kind of tries to, you know, plead with him to stay. Mm -hmm. Like, like you decided to stay. You stayed here with me. Please stay with me. You're a good man. And when, he, when she says that, he makes a point of saying, I pushed a young boy out of a window for Cersei. Mm -hmm. I killed my cousin. I strangled my cousin by ha with my hands to for Cersei. Mm -hmm. I I would have burnt and killed every man, woman, and child for Cersei. And I am a hateful person um, and pretty much breaks up with Brienne, gets on the horse, and starts riding to King's Landing. Right. I thought it was really interesting, too, because when Brienne comes out, so he's having this contemplation she's in bed you know behind him asleep and he gets up and leaves and she kind of wakes up when she comes out and he's packing up his horse and everything she's in a dress and i don't it, it's kind of like a um, a bathrobe kind of right. knitted thing but she's in a dress and you have never ever seen, seen Brienne her in, a dress. in a dress right right and um and then she openly you know openly begs him and then openly weeps um when, that he, when he decides to he, leave yeah. yeah and so this is like she is now um kind of a different person right because of him because right. of, and so that'll be interesting um to see what that does to her to in, her mindset and in where future. she is yeah is she like just that? gonna what decisions she shut makes down and, yeah. and be like this hard bitter person or yeah what? yeah um i think that's actually jamie deciding that he's gonna have to go kill cersei because it's and maybe, and, and it's easier, it's a softer blow on Brienne. She won't want to try to go with him if he makes it seem like he's breaking up with her and going back to Cersei. So she won't try to follow him and right, help him right, kill her. Right, Yeah. Right, I it, think it's... Yeah, it's back, possible. <clears throat> back before, when everybody was leaving Winterfell, the Hound was leaving because he was done with people. And then he's on the road and Arya shows up and they both make a point of saying, I have unfinished business in King's Landing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so they both, they all are going towards <laughs> and, King's Landing. And he asks her if I'm, if I'm dying again, are you going to leave me? And she's like, yeah, yeah probably. probably. <laughs> um, we get uh, this face off um, at the wall outside of King's Landing. And Danny um, makes a point of standing with Tyrion and Grey Worm and the, what of the unsully that are left. Viserion is off in the distance. They show the wall, and it's lined with these scorpions mm -hmm. to kill dragons. There's yep. thousands of them. Well, it looks like thousands. It's probably just a few, you know, like <laughs> 20 or 30 or whatever. Um, and at the gate, above the gate, is Cersei, the Mountain, Euron, and Mascindy in chains. Mm -hmm. And they send... Um, uh, what is his name? Kyburn out. Cersei sends Kyburn mm -hmm. out to was, negotiate. Essentially, it was the hand down. It was the handoff. Tyrion and 
and, and Tyrion Tyver. goes out, and they kind of have an exchange back and forth. And Tyrion pretty much says, "You know, Cersei's reign is over. Um, let's not have this undue um, bloodshed. Stand down." And Kyburn's like, "Danny needs to stand down. We have all these things. We can mm-hmm. shoot your dragons down." Mm-hmm. And they have this back and forth, and Tyrion just like leaves Kyburn and walks over to the gate. Yeah, he's not getting anywhere with Kyburn. Kyburn's just a, a mouthpiece, and he pretty much says He says that, that right, yeah. Yeah, and so and Tyrion's as, like, I'm just going to go, Cersei's not going to kill me. Right. She didn't kill me last time when she had the chance. She's not going to do it now. And he walks up to the wall, and all the archers pull back their bows to right. fire, and she puts her hand up and then tells them, you know, pretty much stands down. Yep. Stand down. Right. And Tyrion spends a good three minutes, four minutes, giving a speech to directly to Cersei about Mm -hmm. you've always loved your children. It's never been about the people your people really don't care about you. They're scared of you. You just worry about your baby and um, please stand down. So there's not all this bloodshed for you and your child. Forget about the people. Just worry about your child. We don't need to have this. And in that exchange, she walks, she kind of, she doesn't really say anything to Tyrion. Right. And she walks over and grabs Miss Cindy by the arm, and it looks like maybe there's going to be a moment of Cersei being right, you know, being like, okay, you're probably right. Let's not do this this way. Let, let, giving her a chance to pull maybe. back from where she is, and she leaves over to Miss Cindy and says, if, if there's any last words, this is the time to say them. Yeah. And at that point in time, you, Miss Cindy knows that she's done. Right. I think she knew as soon as she was captured captured that she was done. Probably, yeah. And the camera holds on Masende, and you see the mountain in the background. And she stands there for a long second. No tears. She doesn't right. cry. No. She doesn't whatever. And she, she says, Dracarys. And the mountain walks over and whacks her head off. Yep. Yep. Oh, Grey Worm's pissed. Danny's <laughs> ready to burn everything down, but yep. she knows she can't do it now. And Cersei's little grin. Yep. And and Tyrion stands. Is oh, the shot is amazing. Tyrion stands there, and he's got his head down, and he turns and he looks over his shoulder, and you can you can see his expression on his face change. Because he, because in behind him, there he's looking at the the shots over his shoulder towards the gate, and you can see Masand, Masande's body on one side mm-hmm. of his head and her head on the other side, and he sees Danny walking away in a rage. Yeah, and he knows. Yeah, he knows at that point in time that yeah. it's 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 going to be on, and he's done everything in his power to stop it, and it's just not going to happen now. Yeah, and and so we. It's it, it's on. It's it's on like Donkey Kong now. Right. And right. So let's talk about the trailer for next week that we saw. It's only like twenty or thirty seconds, and it's pretty much like we, here's Cersei in the Red Keep looking over King's Landing. There's this big distance between the wall where we know where all the scorpions are, and the armies. Uh, John gets there with the army and. Yeah, it's pretty much the showdown. The showdown is all, and they show, but the big thing in the trailer is they show Euron uh, out on the ships. Yep, and he looks up in the sky, and it's very cloudy, and there is a long, bright streak in the air, in the clouds, like a comet again. And then there's an extended screech of a dragon. Right. And he actually even kind of puts his hand up like he's almost, you know, I mean, he could, it could be, he's looking into the sun. Right. Like, it's really like, yeah, it, yeah. (laughs) We've been making a point the entire way of, in the intro, why are they showing the prophecy of the return of the dragons with Comet, which is from... The last time we had the long winter, and the in the return of dragons hap was called for was called upon, was was heralded by the the comet. The comet, right? And so, is that is that how they're going to defeat all these scorpions? Because we only have Viserion left, Drago, Drago, Dragon, Drago. We have one of the dragons left, 
And so all these dragons show up. I, Is this how we keep magic in the show? Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so that's our thoughts, review, discussion of a harder episode this week than last week. I don't know what they're going to call this episode, so I'm going to have to go track that down. Episode four, season eight. Any last? Yeah. Mm. Any last? I need more. I'm not kidding. I need more tequila. You <laughs> fucking killed me Sunday. Like I didn't think. I thought they might kill somebody off in this episode, but that was not the one I thought they were. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, it makes sense. It makes complete sense. Everybody but, expected it to be Grey Worm, right? In last, in the last episode, right. like die in the battle. Right. So, and, but she's the last one. She was actually one of the ones I thought was going to make it through. Yeah. And yeah. now, if you're killing off Basande in this episode, what happens in the next two episodes? Right. And you forgot Bran. Uh, Braun actually does show up. Braun, oh yeah, I forgot. There was so much that happened in this episode, so let's uh, quick run down before my battery on my computer goes down. Um, Jamie and Tyrion are discussing that Jamie and Brienne are finally together, right. and Tyrion's like, I haven't been with a woman in a while, so what's she like down there? And like, kind of <laughs> brotherly kind of talk back and forth. Getting inappropriate. And, have, and, and Tyrion actually makes a point of saying, I'm happy that you're happy. Yeah. Not, not, you know, you've been screwing our sister for so long, right. whatever. Right. I'm happy that you're happy with Brian. Right. And then the door opens and Braun walks in. Right. With the crossbow, with the crossbow. already preloaded <laughs> and has pretty much a long discussion with the two of them. He could have just walked in and killed him, but he doesn't. Right. He comes in, he sits down, he has a drink, he has a crossbow at him. They both kind of go back and forth with them. Braun finally tells Tyrion, shut up or I'm going to punch you in the, th in the, in the nose. <laughs> Tyrion does punches them Tyrion shuts up they have an exchange jamie and then he show, fires a sh warning shot at jamie yeah. yeah but what comes out of the scene is Tyrion says we have a deal we've always had a deal what was the deal and braun says you'll pay me double right and and so what's double and double is heart hearth home no um uh, hold on, I have notes. Keep talking amongst yourself. Um, high Garden. <laughs> high Garden. He yeah, offers yeah, yeah. them High Garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is double. Because <laughs> there's nobody left in High Garden. Uh, yeah, and it, but it's all there. it's got all the riches and the lands and, yeah, uh, and stuff yeah, like that. So, yeah. so Braun accepts it, tells them to live. Through, through this battle. Through this battle at King's yep. Landing, and I'll come find you after. Yep. So I'm thinking that Braun is still in play if something yeah, happens. Yeah, it was and kind of a weird it was a, scene. It, it was a, that's why I kind of forgot about it. It's because yeah. it kind of was wedged in like, oh, by the way, you remember Braun's still there. Yeah. So it's almost like a setup for something threatening, else. Threatening, like, I'm going to kill you, and then, and then leaves with this promise again. I mean, it's... Over and over and over again, it's just, I promise to give you this if you go do this. And he goes and does that. And then it's a new thing. And it's like, yeah. okay, well, after this, you'll get this. And it's just, the the Braun thing is a little weird. Yeah. I, 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 liked, I liked the setup of him leaving King's Landing and going to Winterfell. But now I'm really questioning him being at Winterfell, having a chance to doing or something. And, and, he, well, and, and, and he's showing just gone his, again. And, 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 or showing his true loyalty to Tyrion. Which we all know he has true loyalty to Tyrion. Yeah. Even yeah. though he's been going to the highest bidder the entire time, he still has true loyalty to Tyrion. Yeah. And so I, it was kind of this weird wedged in scene. That Although I, he does point out that all of the lords of of the Seven Kingdoms, they all, their families back in time or whatever, all started off with a hired gun Yeah. who... Yeah. you know, won their place and then had kids and established themselves. And so like, he's almost setting him up himself up to be the winner, the of winner, the iron throne. That would be awesome. <laughs> if he just shows up one day and just shoots whoever's left, ha yeah. left and stuff. So, uh, so that is the review of episode four of game of Thrones from this season. We're exhausted. <laughs> the episode was long. We had a three day weekend out of town and we move, in a day and a half so <laughs> we're gonna go to bed after i edit everything let us know what you thought of this episode leave us a comment let us know all the different things like subscribe all that stuff help us out on patreon if you are on the five dollar level 
for four continuous months, yep. there could be a peril in your future. <laughs> So go to our Patreon page. All the information for our social media and Patreon, all that stuff is in the description below. And until next time, cult members, good night. I need more tequila.